in the house and they're overjoyed to see them come home but they're not there and then later on they receive a telegram to say that they died at that time. These kind of cases are actually quite common in the 1894 census. They're far less common in modern studies. Um, I think this is one of the areas where we really have to wait to see what Becky comes up with. Now, Gurney believed that in that case what's happening is that there's no ghost, there's no spirit involved. It's a telepathic projection, a cry for help or a message sent from person to person. Um, I'm going to have to stop for a moment. I know I'm rambling on, but briefly, these are called veridical hallucinations and they comprised a very small number of the SPR now, uh, survey. Now, one of the things we know is we know that we have the capacity to hallucinate. We know we have the capacity to create dream imagery with all daydream, but we've also probably managed to close our eyes and visualize. And if, like me, you have poor visual recall, you've probably at least experienced graphic dreams. So we know the human brain has the capacity to generate elaborate um, false realities. There is no surprise that people see ghosts. What is surprising is when that experience also coincides with another event, such as the death of the loved one in question, or when the ghost, and I use that term in quotes, conveys information. So, this is a veridical haunting, a crisis apparition. And, um, yeah, that was Gurney's theory. Now, Myers, the man who invented the term telepathy to replace thought transference, um, he took a slightly different take on it, and that was developed into what was called the psychic ether uh, theory, which is that, effectively, the human brain... Um, so let's say, for example, we see a black lady, a lady dressed in black, I should say. Uh, they're always called green ladies or blue ladies. That's not their skin tone. It's just the colour of their dresses. A lady dressed in blue comes down the stairs and walks behind me now, and you all see it. And it turns out, in further research, that she lived in this house and died in 1927. I mean, I'm making this up as I go along. His theory would be that at some point during her life, she telepathically left a message in the psychic ether. I mean, we often hear the stone tape hypothesis mentioned, the idea that these things are recorded in stone and somehow replay as recordings. And that's a bit like Meyer's hypothesis. Meyer's hypothesis was that individuals later can telepathically pick up that signal. So we can see Myers as the father of what's now called the stone tape hypothesis after, I think it was Nigel Neal who wrote Quatermass's 1973 production. Um, Tyrrell, GNM Tyrrell, wrote the great book Apparitions in which he looks at the sense of hallucinations. It's one of the great books on theories of ghosts. Now, he believes that the person who creates the ghost, um, it's a two-way exchange process. Again, it's telepathic. And the problem with all these theories, of course, is that we, haven't, we don't actually have a great deal of evidence that telepathy exists. We're using one miracle to explain another. But for these cases where some information appears to be conveyed, perhaps it is actually a reasonable explanation. I don't know. But Tyrrell's explanation was that, um, oh, how we go. Tyrrell, like Gurney, believes that apparitions originate in the mind of a living person, but they're almost always part of that person's unconscious, and that they're created by the person who sees them. It seems deeply counterintuitive, but imagine it like this. I think of my girlfriend, she phones me. According to Gurney, what's happened is she's decided to ring me and I telepathically pick up on that before the phone rings. According to Tyrrell, it works the other way around. I think of my girlfriend, so my girlfriend then decides to call me, having picked up the signal from me. So, if I see the ghost of a friend, in fact, that friend's fine and well and is sitting around eating macaroni cheese. I think of them, unconsciously as it happens, and generate the idea of them. And if they happen to um, be eating macaroni cheese, if they happen to, you know, be responsive, they also in some way convey the information about what they're doing. So, yeah, okay, if they weren't eating macaroni cheese, then it, wouldn't, it would just be a, a 
an, an awakening. I mean, it could just be a coincidence. Or it could be that my unconscious thought of them and the mental creation of the image picks up information from their mind. God, telepathic theories of ghosts. What a load of extremely, extremely, extremely fascinating stuff. Anyway, those are the telepathic theories. The spirit hypothesis is much easier. It's that there are dead guys out there and that they talk to us and that some people may in some way be sensitive to that. There's no proposed mechanism I know of as to how exactly a deceased disincarnate spirit is able to talk to us. Perhaps there is. I'm not aware of it. And um, I actually personally think it's probably that the dead guy theory is as good as any really when it comes down to it. The last possibility, we all know that the brain, as I said, can hallucinate. We all know that we can also see optical illusions, that we can see visual illusions and, and misperceive. A misperception is slightly different from a hallucination. I won't go into the technical stuff on hallucinations, else we'll be here forever. But we all know, we do it, we do at least know that the experience is possible, that people misperceive things, and in a lot of cases, misperception of normal experiences. A street light. Um, in fact, once I was watching a friend walk down the road. He put his coat on, and there was a street light behind him. It was raining slightly. It cast a shadow on a wall, and I thought I actually saw someone running out to strangle him, and thought he was being attacked. And I shouted, "Oh!" and started to run down the road, startling him completely. It was just an optical illusion, and we went on to video this. And on another occasion, rather in a supposedly haunted house, we discovered a blowhole in the haunted bedroom. Um, I'm not sure what the current's called in air, convection in water maybe, but convection perhaps. But anyway, air currents drawn down the stairs by the uh, by the heat at the bottom from a fire. The smoke went up and a grey cloud of smoke came down and this had been filmed and photographed and appeared in the media as a grey lady. Anyway, I've droned on enough, but as you can see, I'm quite passionate about the whole subject. There is a whole body of academic work on it and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Cheers then. Take care. Bye.